Good morning, y'all. Boy, I had big plans this morning to go to St. Charles Bay area and do some massive exploring. Had a protected wind. All switched. Cold front came through last night quicker and the wind changed. Now I got to renegotiate everything bright and early in the morning when I'm least a good at talking and negotiating. We got the solo skiff with us today though. I'm pumped. So yeah, the front came through quicker than expected and our our east northeast wind switched to a north northeast wind which just blew down the middle of every bay we got dude yeah we'll do what we can with it just trying to get my feet wet a little bit with my own kayak you know yeah this front's coming through now man we're pre-front in the front let's see what happens Coming over the bridge, just seeing an eye of the tiger started playing, so we got them. All right, good deal. Well, we've only got a short run to the tree line here, so a couple hundred yards, and it was proved more reckless to try to tie up. So he's just gonna go ahead and pump it, no worries. But I will tie him, tow him down the protected bank line if we need to move. That ain't no little one. <laughs> oh, he came off. No, he didn't. He's running at me. Oh, I thought he came off, brother. Whoo! Nasty day paying off. That's a good fish. Whoo! That's a big boy. That's a big trout, dude. That's a good fish, man. Nasty days produce, but you gotta be willing to brave it out. Can't be without a sponge in a solo skiff or kayak, man. Love my sponge. All right, I'm gonna stay backed up, throw with the wind, and launch these hard knocks. I'm sure what I'm using. This has become my go-to in nasty weather. Sexy dog hard knocks. A new, uh, it's a new bait. Super loud. I take the metal hook off, it's just a little too much for salt, too much thrashing, and a uh, chance to hook myself. It just makes a lot of racket for these choppy, choppy days. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I don't think this is as big as the last one. That was sure was a beautiful hit. I'll tell you what, I'm swearing by this hard knock, man. Hard knock for dirty, for uh, nasty water. Yeah. Barely keep, maybe? Nah, he's a little guy. Little guy. Come on now, come on now. Get the hard knock out the boat. Chill out now, you you going back, man? You ain't even a, you ain't 14. Barely big enough to hit that plug. <laughs> you want me to come grab one of these fish? This hard knock is killing it, man. He's throwing a spook, super spook. He hasn't had one blow up yet, I done caught three. Right there, dude. Huge blow up right there. Look at the swirl on that thing. Holy begonias. You can still see the swirl. Oh, Lord. I wish I didn't have this guy on. Oh, that might be a keeper. I'm killing it with this hard knock, dude. Killing it. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, net, net. Yeah, get all tangled in the net. Thank you. Might be a keeper though. Follow me all the way back to the boat. Popping cork comes through. What we got? Well, this is a good trout, man. <laughs> yeah. Scoot out. Scoot out and throw far. All right, another guy on the popping cork. Boy, he's tiny. Shot time. Jeremy's still plugging at it. We'll find some more fish though. Y'all hang in there too. Good 
Got the moon up. Ooh, that's far. Let's go fish the drop off, man. No luck back here throwing, walking, and throwing nothing. We're gonna throw some fish bites off the drop off, see what happens. What? Oh, yeah, that's a good little trout. That's a good sign. I don't know, maybe. Fish bike trout. Get a little further out. Ooh, that's a good one too, buddy. Good one. Oh, he inhaled it. Yeah, he dropped it like a tarpon. Head shaker. Get it in. Woo. <laughs> That's a big trout. All right, still just searching, searching, searching. So I'm trying, I'm trying to teach Jeremy to keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. If you're not getting bite, make four or five casts. You don't get bites, move. You don't get bite, four or five casts, move. When you find them, sit, sit still. So now that I caught that one right there, I'm gonna sit here for a little bit and work it hard. There you go, sir. That's a good trout. That's a good trout! You go, 18. He going on the stream. Where he going? Yes, sir. I got sponges thing. I got slime everywhere. GoPro, stop. GoPro, stop. Yeah, I was telling Jeremy how to slide up in this marsh grass. We got a drain coming out right here. Boy, this looks good. Holy smokes. Through in this cut. Nada. Unbelievable. I'm gonna keep trying though. Maybe throw some top water. Jeremy's got it working a little further out. Bump in the bottom. Small one. But he's a redfish. Working on my grand slam. <laughs> Jeremy's got a good one. Black drum. Thirteen. Thirteen inch black drum. What'd he hit? New penny? Fish bites. Yeah, that's that um, dirty boxer. Teresa loves those. I mean, it's got that tail on it, so it gets a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of motion to pick up on it really good. Got some stink on it. That's why that drum had it. They love stink. That's how it is? Yeah. You know? It's probably been my first time in 20 plus years since I caught one of these. Really rely on their sense of smell. So when you're throwing fish bites, you'll catch them. If you get on soft plastics, you'll catch half as many. Normal soft plastics. They don't. They don't nearly hit an arrow. That's pretty. We'll take some pictures of that guy. And he gone. He's off. Good job. He's off. Grow a little bit bigger. All right, man. Ooh, that sucker went down, didn't it? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Yes, sir. I might keep. Maybe. You're close. It's what an exotic spot. We're like two miles on a peninsula. Two miles from the mainland. Very tip of a peninsula. Shell reef goes straight out to the bay. Heard a story about Indians that would cross this bay to, to escape other Indian tribes at low tide because these shell bars go all the way across. There's two of them. There's one here and there's one about five miles that way. I'm not sure which one they would use. But they were able to walk right across Copano to escape hostile tribes. The Karankawa Indians were the indigenous group that occupied this Rockport coastal bend area. The Karankawa people had three or four main tribes. One of those was the Copanis. I'm sure that's where they got the name Copano for the bay. 
So the Karankawa Indians always managed to find fresh water in these parts. The Europeans couldn't figure out how they were doing it because all their wells ended up tasting salty. So they were one of the few tribes to have known to keep dogs. They took dogs with them everywhere from hunts to just goofing around and swimming. They were kind of like a coyote wolf-like cross. The Karankawas were said to be great archers. They used redwood bows that matched their height. I can appreciate the bow hunting part. Super fascinating group of people. We've been up, he's been up since 2, I've been up since 4.30, and we've spent till 1 o'clock plus working from daybreak all the way two mile stretch bank line. So prefrontal, we were kind of like in the front coming in. Bite was hot. After the wind started laying down, the front passed. The bike kind of stopped, right? A lot. Slowed way down. So, you know, a day before the front, awesome. As the front's coming in, amazing. Once it passes, all right, we made it back, people. Catch y'all later. This is hilarious. What was that? Oh no, Godzilla on a motorcycle. Oh, God, yeah.